Hey guys, welcome back to Cancel This, CancelThisShow.com. Happy Friday. We continue our paranormal free-for-all conspiracy theory Friday right now. I'm Vic Faust, Tab of the Hassle here. Lizzie Sparks and Projo. We are so excited to have our new friend, Miss Brittany Buckwalter. She is, and I guess you've got a couple different names, but yeah. I saw you as the uncensored median. Medium. Medium, I'm sorry, but we also have small town psychic medium behind you as well. Yeah. I've had several names. Um, I think my favorite is metal medium. So. Oh, oh how'd you get that one? Um, I meditate to metal before I, I do all my I oh, love that it. Wild. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, we had a medium on uh, months and months and months ago. Shannon Rock. And Shannon Rock, mm -hmm. she called herself the Weedium. Medium. Yes. Are you familiar with the Weedium? No, I'm not familiar with her, um, but your um, Jill uh, let me know that there was another medium and uh, she had been on here before and I thought it was super cool. Her name just like, blew me. That was hilarious. Well, you guys are super, super popular when you come on. I've talked about it before. I am scared to death to even mess with this stuff <laughs> because I am convinced, even if people try to say, oh, there are some of them or most of them are fake or whatever. And I'm like, uh, -uh I've met too many people and nobody wants to deal with what people deal with. Nobody wants to wake up and go, oh my God, I feel this way or I'm being told this and I'm being told that. Now I got to worry about what people think about me. There is no doubt skills are there. There are gifts, there are talents that are there. Well, thank you. There's no doubt. I'm just not messing with it. I, I'm not my, in my Christian faith and my scripture. That's why I stay far, far away. But people want to know and yeah. cancel. This is about letting people talk, letting people go out there and then letting people decide whatever the heck they're going to do. Exactly. And, and Jill said that you were very popular and we looked you up and you're super, super popular. And you have a show in St. Louis this weekend. I do. Tell everybody about your show. Super stoked about that. Uh, yeah, so it is going to be at the Funny Bone, 3 p.m. Uh, at the St. Charles Funny Bone, not the uh, Westport one. And um, I'm excited about it mainly because it's an opportunity to um, incorporate what I've already been doing, which is comedy, with um, mediumship. And it's just it's just a way to even and balance out the show because it's so emotional and it's such a... Um, you know, it's just such a deep subject. And so to be able to add some laughter in there, I think is, is super awesome. That would be an interesting show. Now, when you're doing your comedic routine, mm -hmm. do you often connect with people? Is that part of your routine? So no, actually there is no routine. It's oh, just, okay, okay. it comes out, it's funny. It's, <laughs> you know, um, some of the things that have been brought up that are like over, I mean, just, just, a few weeks ago, I was in um, Springfield and we brought through uh, a lady's husband and he told me the color of a certain object that she keeps in her drawer. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> to prove that it Whoa. actually was real. <laughs> wow. And she... Awkward. The rest, of, I know. And I, <laughs> I, I kind of led into it like, can I say this? And once I said the color, her eyes went like this. And it was obvious that she knew exactly what I was talking about without saying vibrator. But how did she... <laughs> without say vibrator. But Brittany, how did she feel about knowing that that connection was there? Uh, I think at first she was a bit shocked and embarrassed and I, I could see it all go through her mind. Eventually we got to closure and peace. And I mean, you know, she was crying, but for a split second, it was like, Oh my God, he can see when I do that. Yeah. But that's not <laughs> how it works for everybody. Just so you know, spirit doesn't just hang out <laughs> when you're doing, uh, the dirty or going to the bathroom. But uh, what about, case, what about, uh, availability for tickets for tomorrow's show? There is some availability, but Matt just messaged me and, uh, we are almost sold out. Wow. Good for and, you. Uh, that's now, awesome. Do you continue to have shows in the St. Louis area? I've had several shows, um, or across the country for that matter. We right. have listeners all across the country. Right. Yeah. No. And I do, uh, mainly in the tri-state area, but, um, the few places that I've done St. Louis shows have been, um, hotels and they just don't seem to be the right fit. And so when funny bone was like, heck yeah, let's do this. I was like, okay, they're really, I mean, it's real. There's somebody up there. <laughs> I think that's fantastic. Yeah. It would be so interesting. Where you? are you from? Um, from Palmyra, Missouri, which is just like 12 oh, yeah. miles west of Hannibal. But I've lived in Hannibal for like, you know, six, 17 years. So 
We they have, have really good runners there. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> or they you do. They, they do. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. yes. Yeah. And I'm a lot not, of bad storms. They do have a lot of bad storms, <laughs> and I am not one of the runners. But yeah. how how old were you when you realized that you had a certain set of skills that you were connecting with? spirits or people who have passed on? So I was four when I saw my very first spirit, which is just a crazy story, but uh, I was four years old. And, um, but you know, at age four, you don't think, oh, I have this ability. It wasn't until, and you know, I continued to see spirit all the way up until puberty. Um, and then once I hit, uh, like 12, 13, I stopped, it stopped. There was nothing until about, you know, age 20, that's when my psychic ability kicked uh, back in. And then I didn't realize I was a medium until 27. So, wow. yeah, because it's such a subtle thing. And I, I believe that, you know, psychics, everybody in the studio is psychic because that was an ability that God gave us to keep us safe. It's just, you know, your gut feeling. It keeps you from doing stupid stuff. <laughs> and so that's what being psychic is. Some of us are just more in tune with that gut feeling than others. Um, but I believe mediums are born. And like I said, it was such a subtle uh, thing that I had been doing all my life that I didn't realize that I was actually communicating with spirit until somebody was like, dude, <laughs> I actually went to a, a show similar to the one that I'm getting ready to have. And I was sitting in the very back and there are like four mediums up front and everything that the mediums were saying, I was thinking like five or 10 minutes before they were saying it. And maybe not exactly, but like, you know, um, they would say Hawaii and five minutes ago I was thinking about a pineapple. I mean, just stupid stuff. And before I realized it, by the end of the show, I was like, I was reading people on either side of me, behind me. It was just the craziest situation. How did your family react when obviously at some point you had to have a conversation yeah. that this is happening? What? How did they react? Oh, it was my... <laughs> My dad pretty laid back and um, it had several jobs leading up to this. And so I think in his mind, he thought this was just going to be another one of Britney's crazy ass brain ideas. I don't know what he thought, <laughs> but he was just like, OK. He literally said, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> whatever floats and your funny. boat. Whatever yeah, floats that's your boat. funny. And so I'm like, yeah, all right, I don't think you get it, but all right, I'm not even going to try to go there. Uh, I told my mom and I believe what she said was, you really think you can do that shit? <laughs> you really can I you say can that? On of course yeah, you, you can. Yeah, you can say whatever on a podcast. <laughs> Brittany, you're already talking about vibrators. Come on. <laughs> I know. Vibrators we weren't and even, shit we and doing like the dirty. <laughs> <laughs> it's if you, all, if it's, you come to the show, that's what you'll do. It's all good in the cancel hood. <laughs> that's it's, right. It's all right. <laughs> I love it. Hey, what about your uh your fans and you do have fans you you know your mom clearly was a fan to find out when you told her she was asking those questions um for lack of a better term people swear by you and they oh. feel as if um all they do is do the quick research on you and people swear by you um they feel as if you've helped them connect with somebody that helps them get through whatever part of life that they're in at that time i told you i'm not into it but my god watching tabitha and eric um, get readings and do readings and the feelings that it's given them, uh, it's been remarkable. And I see the people, they swear by you and they go to their shows or they get readings by you. Hell, I ran into somebody like, you know, I, somebody last night, I said, I've got Brittany Buckwalter coming in. He goes, Vic, my wife is going to see her. Oh, and wow. <laughs> That's awesome. I was like, okay, they're po case in point. Um, how does it make you feel? Because I guarantee you don't live what most people would consider to be some comfortable life talking to spirits. Right. Um, I used to, well, first of all, um, I want to say how um, unbelievable, I get emotional when I talk about it, how unbelievably, incredibly grateful I am for um, each and every person that stepped in my life and every person that follows, because without them, I wouldn't be here. But um, also, I, I feel so much gratitude. I just, it makes me tear up every time I think about my followers. Anyways, um, so life um, in the beginning, it wasn't quite as loud. 
now that I've been doing it for, you know, so many years, uh, spirit's loud. And you're right. It's not quite as quiet and easy. Um, everywhere I go, I feel like I'm being asked to work. It's like I'm on salary, you know? So like I might not be getting paid to do a reading, but while I'm in line at Walmart and I'm telling this lady that her dead sister is proud of her, um, it's like, <laughs> all right, well, hopefully I'll get paid for that lady. I don't know. Just do what I do. You know, when it comes in, it comes out. That's and it's, it's therapeutic for some people, you know, totally. I mean, most people, you know, have lost family members, mm -hmm. you know, some more than others. And I know Eric, who he's not here, he lost his sister. And when he talked to Shannon Rock, I think it was very healing for him mm -hmm. to be able to talk to someone that could sort of pass on messages. And, you know, the way Eric explained it to me is, and, and the reason why he believed the reading was accurate is because they walked him through his sister's home. Yeah. very accurately, something that no one would know. Right. And I mean, I'm, it's such a, I think, a, a awakening moment for so many people when they think, oh my gosh, you would never know this. That's my favorite part about doing this. And I kind of feel weird saying this, but it's the truth. My favorite is to read men, to watch these big burly guys who come in like, you know, this lady is a quack and bring them to their knees. I'm like, ah, Vic, you're in I get trouble. excited about that. Yeah, like I'm very Catholic. He doesn't like I really portray myself as being some big tough no. strong. I have never done that. <laughs> ever, ever, Not ever. Not to those of us who know you know you are a big no, softie. No. Um <laughs> what can people expect when they get a reading with you? Well, my soul um my sole mission when I'm reading someone is to first bring through the evidence, which is kind of what sets me apart from other mediums because I'm evidence-based medium, which means before I give you the message and I tell you what they really want to hear uh, or what you really want to hear and what they want to tell you, I've got to find out for sure that I have who I say I have. And I can't do that without first giving you a body of evidence. So I usually go through, you know, three to six things in the beginning, um, male or female, what's the relationship? Uh, how did you pass? Give me a number. And that's another thing that sets me apart from just about any other medium that I know is that numbers are huge to me. So if you're going to come to my show, know your numbers <laughs> because what does that mean? What that means is, uh, so let's say I'm bringing up the number five, five could have to do with the fifth month of the year, which would be May. So I might say, why am I seeing five? Could it have to do with May? Was your loved one, did they pass in, in the month of May? Is their birthday in May? Um, it, those numbers really anchor me. And I just mm -hmm. love to have, two or three numbers before I even move on. You can't fight numbers. I mean, you know, but I like to get into the nitty gritty stuff, the stuff that's not on Facebook. Um, that's not in an obituary to really prove who I have. So, uh, you know, things like what they, what they, uh, collected, um, what they did for a living, uh, something silly between the two of you. Um, and I brought up everything from uh, just the other day, it was a coin that, a grandpa carried with a naked lady on each side the <laughs> tails was the butt and the top and so that was really fun yeah baby <laughs> yeah and, and they actually buried him with that coin Aww. so it was so cool to, to be like yeah you still got that he's still flipping that are you able to sleep <laughs> i was going to ask her that too. how does your brain shut off gummies <laughs> yeah, well, green, oh, you should try the green light dispensary gummy. <laughs> there you go. They're a sponsor of our show, and we get a we have a weed Wednesday every what? week. What? Yeah, and yeah, we do a weed Wednesday every every week, and just educating uh, men and women uh, of all ages. I mean, what's there? Wh how you could use this? Maybe yeah. to do something that's more natural than the drug industry. Yeah, and uh, and then if you have problems sleeping, we'll check out these indica gummies yeah. that we yes. have from green light yes because i'm assuming people come to you when you're trying to sleep and talk to you and tell you things and exactly. probably try to tell you to find people and yep. do different things is what i assume yeah just last night i was yeah yes <laughs> yeah, i'm not even going to get into it and take your show in a whole nother direction but yes that happens often and um i never actually until about three years ago um it was horrific. I didn't sleep at all. I had insomnia like you wouldn't believe. My doctor prescribed me um, three or four different medications and all of them made me wake up feeling horrible. I mean, I, it was better to just not sleep. And then a, a nurse friend of mine uh, said, you should really try gummies. And back in the day, I was known as like the weed Nazi. I'm like, no drugs, drugs are bad, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and now I'm like, Okay, calling weed a drug is like calling shit a cuss word. It just does not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's right. not the same. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I've been getting sleep a lot better now, thanks to my indica gummies. 
There you get the Indica. We're talking with Brittany Buckwalter, and she is, as you see behind her, the small town psychic medium, also the uncensored medium. Uh, You can check out her website, BrittanyBuckwalter.com. Once again, BrittanyBuckwalter.com. I love what's on the front page of your website. Unfiltered, uncensored, and unbelievable. Yep. What, what exactly on your wrist is the mm-hmm. eye that you that you have? This is, um, yeah, it's just a, it's like twisting weird. This is my eye. Just um, I, I actually got that over. I have a really weird um, condition called Keen's box disease where I had to have three bones removed because the blood doesn't flow to my bones. But anyway, oh, wow, I'd never even heard of that. I know nobody has. It's it, guess what? It affects the lunate bone, the only bone in your body that is a moon shape. Oh wow! Oh. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Unreal! Yeah, and it's extremely. No, that's rare. great information. But that it that I got that to cover up that scar. But uh, I also always wanted it. But so it's just basically like, hey, you know, you know more than you you think and uh remember that because you know i'm just a human like everybody else and a lot of times i'll get you know gosh is this my psychic ability kicking in or is this my ego is this <laughs> what do you what do you say to detractors when we had shannon rock on we had a lot of listeners who feel that being a medium is very unchristian it's against the bible and there are a lot of people who are going to say tomorrow mm-hmm. when we talk about this yep. they're going to say well those are just demons coming through yeah. now i don't believe that but there are people who are always 50, going to say 50, that it was about 50 50 the last time we had, oh yeah was it was to say it, absolutely so the so, so most of the listeners are highly supportive but some always have what do you say to those people because i know you have faced these questions before oh, yeah. it breaks my heart honestly it, it really breaks my heart to think that um someone would think that what I'm doing here is demonic, but, uh, I guess I should first let you know that I grew up Lutheran. Um, yay Lutheran. Yeah. yeah, We were, (laughs) my dad was very involved in our church and, uh, I have St. Michael tattooed on my arm. (laughs) And so I, uh, Jesus is my homeboy. I love him. I believe in his story. Jesus is my homeboy. Uh, That's great. (laughs) We've been getting really close lately. Um, but I, truly believe in um, my faith. And so I think it's important for me to say it because a lot of psychics would say, well, no, I don't. And this is why. But I also feel that I'm a spiritualist as well. I connect with spirit. And um, my faith is in God is not wavered one bit at all because of what I do or who I am. It should be bolstered because now you know, like so many other people, that this life that we we're living, this is not it. Yep, there is something right. more. It's beautiful. Um, here comes, this is my issue. So... <sighs> If we're not even talking about, you know, people that believe this is demons, we're just talking about skeptics. Skepticism is totally uh, healthy. You have to have skepticism. It's when you're cynical that it becomes an issue for me. When you refuse to even believe um, what somebody else is saying, you're just an asshole. So (laughs) that is an issue. But if you're skeptical, I want you to be healthy and open and skeptical. With the Christian side of things, um, where I stand, and, and I don't really have a the opportunity to tell people this a lot, but where I stand is, like I said, I believe in God. What I, what I have a hard time it with is the Bible. <laughs> I have a hard time with, um, worshiping a book that agrees with, um, slavery and genocide and, you know, <laughs> beating your wife if, and, <laughs> and bestiality, but vilifies, um, psychics or prophets, which is exactly what Jesus was. So that's where my issue comes in. And there are many parts of scripture, um, you know, in confirmation, I was given John three sixteen. There are parts of the Bible that are beautiful, but I just look at the Bible as the Bible. That's exactly yeah, and, what it and is. Biblical scripture. I mean, you've already seen them, you mm-hmm. know, there's, you know, there's countless verses not to consult with mediums. Right. That's, that's where Christian faiths come in. And then people decide what they want to do or not. I told you, and I told you, I treat any medium like I treat anybody else with respect. I don't have to go get a reading, right? but I don't also have to like go out and rip you just right. like you wouldn't rip me and not yeah go out and do it. It's like, Hey, I do what I do. You do what you do from that standpoint. And that's what I love about society. I love when people have that view. Well, you should. I love it. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. People tear down what they don't understand and that or what, or what they think they know, but they don't know. Mm -hmm. And then that's where the problem occurs. And that's why the conversations need to be had because don't you feel like truth will always Mm -hmm. at least show itself. Yeah. Yeah. But and Vic, so, what, what about you personally? What would it take for you 
to be a big believer? Would you have to have Probably nothing someone... because of my belief in scripture. And that's where I stand. Because then, like, I could ask the question back to you, what's it going to take for you yeah. to actually <laughs> follow scripture? I like that. You know, so it's one of those things. I just feel like if you're led but to it. But what if you had this aha you're moment? You're going to go into it. Um, Brittany could tell me, I have so many people that want to talk to you. And I would not even open myself to it. So it wouldn't be fair to the skills that she has. Yeah. And I'm somebody who says, I believe 100% more so than not that people have skills. They're gifted with these skills. And then it's almost, you may call it a blessing now, but I'd almost feel like, could you imagine being you and having those experiences as kids? What the hell am I supposed to do? I'm standing in Walmart. Mm. Am I supposed to tell somebody or not? I'm just trying to relax and try to enjoy this human existence that I have. I don't feel like it's, that's what makes me feel. Well, yeah, if, because it, oh my God, there exactly. are gifts there. Skills. My, my point stops. Where it's like, okay, there's gifts and there's skills. And thank you God that I don't have those gifts and skills. <laughs> it would have to be overwhelming. But I'm not going to go think, overboard. It's not, a, it's not at all like the sixth sense. And I think a lot of people really truly believe that that's how it is. Now, when I was a kid, I will say it was much more frightening. Um, as an adult, there's a rapport and a respect there between me and spirit. And um, they know when I'm with my kids, I am off the clock. Stay away from me. I can think of maybe five times uh, in the last eight years that I have you know, ha had to bring through spirit with my kids. And, um, how old are your children? Uh, seven and nine. Oh, do they, do they know that mom's special? Oh, they, <laughs> they'd say special ed, but yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. When my son was two, uh, I'll, I'll never forget. He, we were laying in bed and he said, mommy, who's that man over there? And I couldn't see the man. And I'm like, uh, yeah, you know, the this chill is factor. The, yes. Oh, <laughs> I get totally, the chills yeah. just now. And then my daughter, um, when she was four, my ex-husband was baking a pizza to bring home uh, in his lunchroom at his work. He was going to surprise me because I love pizza and I didn't, wouldn't, you know, wouldn't have to make dinner. So he threw a pizza in and finished cleaning up everything um, before he came home. And when he got home, he walked in the door and my four-year-old walked up to him and she said, Daddy, where's the pizza? And he hadn't told me or anybody else yeah. that he was making a pizza. And he was like, oh, my God, I left it in the oven. And oh. so he could have burnt down his entire building had my psychic little four-year-old not come in and said, where's the pizza? So wow. the gift's been passed on. I believe it has, which is kind of scary. Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't let her know that she knows so much. But... Do you know any other moms and daughters or adults and their children that may have gifts like that? I, 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 not closely or personally, I have a few students, um, who they have the gift and I think that they think, or, you know, their children do have the gift, but, um, you know, not closely. Do you both talk to the spirits at the same time? Like, would they talk to you both? Um, London, my daughter, she is, hasn't come to the mediumship realm. So I, I don't, I mean, I haven't seen her deal with that, but she is probably the most brilliant psychic I've ever seen. I mean, and not saying something after you've had this exactly. your entire life. Well, just the other night, uh, we were laying in bed upstairs in her room, and she said, um, Mommy, I just closed my eyes and I saw a big glass falling down the stairs. And I thought that was weird. I got up to get another glass of wine, so I had to go downstairs. And one of the kids had put um, one of my glass cylinders that had like fancy stuff in it on the step. I kicked it and it exploded. And so wow. that was the glass that she wow. saw. Great. Yeah. And I didn't even know it was there as dark, you know. So, yeah, she's she's going to give me a run for my money. <laughs> Do you ever deal with a situation where you're walking and you walk in somewhere or you meet new people and you, you get things quickly, immediately, things that you want to say, maybe things that – you're not supposed to say, and then you're just left going, what do I do here? Exactly. All the time. Or all e And even things that may not be so great. Yeah. I yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I was uh, working as a waitress, and this was before I found out that I was a psychic or a medium, but um, I was sitting next to one of the other waitresses after a long night, and uh, her grandfather had come through, and um, he had told me that he was sorry for molesting her. <clears throat> and I mean, I'd oh, worked there wow. for like three days. And I'm like, oh, my God, do I tell wow. this girl that he's sorry? You know, I eventually ended up telling her and, you know, she's like, oh, my God, how did you know? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah. Did that give her peace that oh, he was she, sorry? Yes. Um, 
she, she said that it gave her peace that he was on the other side still feeling bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can understand no, that yeah, one. No, yeah. So absolutely. I'm like, oh, well, you know, whatever, as long as it helps. But yeah. if that, that whenever you, you say that, that makes me question. I'm always questioning. I absolutely 100% believe there is more to this life. Mm -hmm. There is more after this life. Yeah. We're, we're energy and our energy continues on in some capacity. But then you also wonder, well, someone like that who was a molest, you know, molester, who mm -hmm. knows what he did to his granddaughter, they make it to the other side too. So right. he's not in hell. He's uh, but where we all don't, the other but people But we are. don't know. That's just it. Can how, he communicate how do we, from hell? But mean? how do we know where that spirit is communicating from? Well, I've never, and I've done, oh my gosh, probably 7,000 readings. I have never ever had a spirit walk up to me and say, hi, I'm Joe from hell. Yeah. Um, and I've never seen like <laughs> flames or anything like that. I've worked on previous projects where I had to communicate with serial killers and, um, you know, they come through just like your mom or your dad would. Uh, so for me, there's no different, you know, it's, it's, I can only, um, give you my philosophy and that's based on what I've experienced. And so far what I've experienced is there's one afterlife. I had a lady, um, asked me to come in one time just randomly. She owned a place called Carl Ox cars in Hannibal. And she said, I found out what you did. She sent me a message on Facebook. She said, I was wondering if you would come in and talk with me. And I thought this is bizarre. <laughs> I thought she was just trying to get a free reading or something, which whatever, you know? So I go in, she shows me to her office and I sit down and she said, Brittany, where do you think, Hitler went when he died. <laughs> and I'm like, hell? <laughs> and she said, no. He was sent here to show us what evil is. If he wouldn't have been here, we wouldn't know right from wrong. She said, he gave up his soul to show us what pure evil was so that we would know in humanity, you know, as humanity, in humanity, how to act and how not to act. And um, that was literally the only reason she brought me there. And I truly feel to this day that that was something that was something that I was supposed to internalize. And, and it just made such an impact on me because, to be honest, like I said, I've never had anybody come through and say they're from hell. I With, get the line of thinking in her mind. Yeah, I get, well, yeah, I get the line, too. line of thinking. But if you also study evil and if you believe anything with scripture, the devil doesn't come as something evil. And That's nasty. right. It comes as everything something you want. that you want, mm -hmm. which leads me into the question, do you ever think for maybe critics that um, may say, well, how do you know, or people who are inquisitive or just curious, how do you know you're not speaking with demons? Before I tell you that, I do have to say one thing. Um, if that were my, I want nothing to do with the devil. I don't even. You've made that clear, I think. The yeah, fact yeah. that that's in my mouth and just, I even said that word makes me sick. Um, I don't even like to talk about anything evil, to be honest with you. I'm a big wuss. Uh, I'm like, <laughs> if that's real yeah. and you want to believe in it, you go right ahead. But I'm over here in La La Land and that doesn't exist over here. <laughs> um, and and so, you know, if, 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 if the devil is going to appear in things that I want, well, he sure has been given all of us a lot. He gave you your wife. He gave you your husband. He gave you your, I just, mm -mm, nope, I'm not going to believe that there's evil in anything good. But um like I said, I've never communicated with anything dark, um, to my knowledge. And there was this, this, another reason why I got Archangel Michael tattooed on me with the cross, because I'm like, I just want to mark myself. I right do. Now. I do love that. I wondered if that's, that's why you had that. Yeah. I can see why you did that. I'm not effing around. <laughs> I'm not letting anything darken over here. Um, and Shannon Rock, when we, the medium, we talked to her, she said the same thing, you know, yeah. as a matter of fact, she said, at did no she point, have a, she had a, no, Arch no, Michael no, 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 she didn't. Oh. But she said no dark spirit had ever, uh, you know, approach her, talk to her or anything. It was always positive and light and things like that. And I know people that have had that happen. And yeah. in fact, one of my best friends, that's what she does. She removes attachments. So when we get together, it's like, I don't want to hear anything about what you did at work. Let's just hang out <laughs> because it's terrifying. <laughs> but uh yeah, I I know a lot of people who have dealt with that. I get all kinds of messages throughout the year. Hey, I think somebody has an attachment. Um, can you help us with that? No, What's an call a priest. <laughs> uh, something dark, demonic is what I would assume. I I won't even educate my, I, I'm just, you know. Try to but, keep it out of your mind. Mm -hmm, yeah. But you do believe evil exists. I don't want to say it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, because so without say saying it, it yeah. you know what yeah, I mean? Of course. Because I'm just like, uh-uh. If you it. say it and you think about it and you mm -hmm. let it in, that's why oh. whenever we talk about scary stories, sometimes outside of the show, I try not to even talk about it. I don't even want to You don't want to let it, it in. In yeah. my head. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I one time went to this um, metaphysical fair and it was right after I'd found out I was a psychic medium. And uh, I saw somebody doing something called Reiki, which I don't know a whole lot about. But um, I thought, you know, I'm going to try this. I've heard there's some really great healing properties to this. So I gave the lady my $25 and I sat down in the seat and she came behind me. She said, I can't touch you. I said, why? She said, the biggest angel I have ever seen in my life is standing over you. I will not be able to break that barrier. Wow. And I'm like, eh. yeah, that's, that's, wow. <laughs> that's okay. the chill factor. Then I'm like, can I get my money back? <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> is, is Reiki like yoga? No, no, I don't know. It's no, not like yoga, but it, not it like involves yoga. stones. Vic yes. and I know somebody who practices it. Yes. It's a form of he uh, holistic healing, you know, um, and without having to touch you. So oh, okay. kind of like EFT or, um, uh, uh, what is the acupuncture without the needles? Okay. It's what I've been told, Got it. <laughs> but I am not a specialist and I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to have our friend come in Yeah, who, who practices. We're talking with Brittany Buckwalter. She has a show tomorrow, Saturday, over at the Funny Bone St. Charles. Unfortunately, it may all be sold out. You may be able to look somewhere and get some tickets. Uh, and if not tomorrow, look her up. Um, does your website have future shows listed yet? Um, or actually, if you follow me on eventbrite.com. Um, if you go on there and follow me, you'll get, you'll be the first to be alerted for, for everything. The time goes by so, 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 so fast as we're learning and, and, and our audience is very captivated by you too. Oh, cool. What you talked a little bit about earlier, but if somebody wants to try this out or like something's bugging them and they really want to see if there's something for them. Like a private reading. Yeah. I could probably even, yeah. Even though I wasn't crazy about it. Um, if they wanted to get in contact with you, what can, what can, how can you help them? So I'm actually booked for the rest of the year. Um, that's a, that's a pretty, for yeah. You. But, <laughs> wow. But, uh, as of, as of right now, my messaging system is open. It will be turned off soon because I can't keep up with it all, <laughs> but you can message me and um, we can get you set up, uh, should there be a cancellation or something like that. But if you don't get in with me, um, I would just like for you, you to make sure that when you set up a reading with a psychic, please check to make sure that they have a website, first of all, because if they're paying, you know, twelve ninety nine, twenty bucks a month or whatever for a decent website, um, they're putting, you know, effort into their ability and they believe in it. Second, check them out on Facebook, read their uh, reviews, make sure before you give them money that <laughs> that they are, um, you know, legit, because just like you know, swindling doctors and lawyers, there are swindling mediums and psychics. So just make sure you check them out. That's what I would, would recommend. Tabitha, anything else? I hope we get to have you come back sometime. Yeah. You know, cause I, I, there's so many questions, so many questions to ask and never enough time to ask them because it's so fascinating to me. The, the aspect We've of... We've been talking for almost 30 I minutes. Know, but over just, <laughs> it's just overwhelming to me because just the the aspect, of, like I said, it has to be overwhelming to you because you can't help everybody. That is the hardest part. And people come through to you on both sides, people who want, who want help, people on the other side who want you to give messages and pass along. All I'm sitting here thinking about is how overwhelmed you are. Um, yeah. <laughs> I take a, a really good antidepressant. So I have a great doctor. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was a joke. So my <laughs> my boyfriend would say the same thing. He's just like every every day, at least once a day, he's like, you are so overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm so sorry about how overwhelmed you are. But I mean, you get used to it. Your your body. But, the, but think about how many people on the other side, if you believe it, are trying to reach out all at once. They all have messages. They have all want to talk right now. Six. That's why. What does that mean? It means I have six spirits that are interested in speaking right now with you. Oh what my I mean? gosh. <laughs> so yes, it's okay. So is it anybody in this room yeah. that is doing that? Is it a male or a female that they're reaching out to? Well, I know that we don't have a whole lot of time and so I don't want to get started on something. And no, you have, you can, I mean, we have time for that. We do. Well, I have, um, I just don't want to hear if all six are for me. Okay. <laughs> oh, and they probably are. She's not, she's knocking them all off right now. <laughs> well, if it is for you, you got to at least tell me. Um, I do want to say though on that, before I do anything like that, a lot of people will be like, how come you can get, um, you know, what my dead grandma said last night to me in my mind, but you can't get the lottery numbers. That is like, if I had a dollar for every time somebody said that shit, I would be, I would not be here. Yeah, you would be lottery. Right. That's self-serving. I would. I would be on a beach. That's just uh -huh. wrong. 
Yeah. So, yeah. but people do it all the time. But to me, that would be like um, saying to a teller, well, how come you don't just take all the money in the vault and run? Why are you just okay with your $15 an hour? <laughs> because there's a reason, <laughs> there's a reason that we don't do things. There's a method behind why spirit is making sure that we only get, um, you know, the very limited amount of information that we get. There's a reason that we have to work for what we work for, uh, because if we didn't, they wouldn't have someone speaking for mm -hmm. them. So there is a female coming through. She's mother-like, mother, -like, mother uh, or grandmother-like. She keeps bringing up um, the hope sign, which is usually cancer for me. And it's really weird because uh, she showed me the 21st and then she showed me April. So there's going to be, these are probably two different, two different things. So like the fourth of a month or April, the 21st or the, the age 21, something with 21. Ha there's some connection there. Um <laughs> And then she keeps showing me Colorado. So I don't know if somebody's planning a trip there or if they recently went there or I love looking at Vic because he's like, nope, uh-uh. No, I mean, nope. I'm, just, I'm thinking. I'm <laughs> well, like, you always try to think, you know, and it's funny that you say that. I don't, not, and I'm not saying that's why it relates to me because 21 and April does not. But one time I had a dream about my grandmother and in my dream, she came to me. And I'm like, Grandma, where have you been? We've been looking for signs of you. And she said, I've been in Colorado. <laughs> and we funny. kind of laughed because we're like, that's so weird because my grandma never talked about going to Colorado. But it was so weird in the dream that she's like, oh, I've been in Colorado. Now I'm back. I'm like, that was so weird. Okay. So this is your yeah. grandma, without Isn't a doubt. <laughs> And she's definitely confirming. Jill. She's definitely <laughs> out in the waiting room. <laughs> she's definitely confirming for you that uh, that dream was real. She did come to you. I see. I and I believe in that stuff. I think people come to you in your dreams. Mm -hmm. I really do. I wish they would come to me. Vic's looking dream. at me like, yeah, right. right? No, yeah. no, I'm taking it all in. I don't ever. I've never. Um, maybe one time had a dream about a loved one. But Isn't that something I do all amazing. the time? Do you have any connect? Um, do you know for sure if she had a slow passing? So this wouldn't be instant. It wouldn't be like fell down the stairs and broke a hip. It would be like, um, um, well, she was ninety-one years old. Okay, you and know, there were and, two different factors leading up to her passing. So yeah, I mean, it, it, if it's my grandma, she was ninety-one years old. She lived a you know a very good, healthy life. But during COVID, things got a little crazy, mm -hmm. and my mom had to have surgery, and we couldn't take care of her because she was starting to get a little bit of dementia. Oh yeah, okay. And she that. ended up yeah. being in a nursing home, you know, but. But it was just uh, old age, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. I would consider that slow passing. Yeah. Sure. Um, and there, well, there's probably two different factors um, with her passing. We won't get into that. But somebody somebody has cancer or is <laughs> is going to get it or battled it and then was healed. Does that her make husband had cancer? He had uh, bladder cancer and prostate cancer. I think it started bladder and it traveled. And he and but he's on the other side. Yes. Okay. And he did heal though, but so, this isn't, oh, okay. it's not for him though. This is for a female. Oh yeah. I don't, I don't. And I think I it's breast. It so just, uh, I hope it's not me. I need my boobs. Go, no. <laughs> go get them Down slammed. The <laughs> I would go get them checked. <laughs> I need both of them. I need yeah. both of them. God. No, okay. I don't, I, I, I'm not a hundred percent for sure. Um, exactly where that's But you know what? In. But sometimes things come through and then two months later, yeah. it's like, Oh, you're exactly right. Oh. Yep. I remember what happened. And yeah, so you Time can, to get a mammogram, ladies. Yep. You can say, you know, no, that couldn't have happened or can't be real. And then two months later That's when it right. happens, boom. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, she's still alive today. Yeah. And, if you, <laughs> and Jill is out in the, our salesperson, Jill, is out in the Carroll House Lounge asking if that person is still alive or not. Yeah, I believe that the person who has breast cancer or... Uh, a chest cancer, so this could be lungs as well, um, is still alive. I think you're talking about my mom. Oh, really? I, I do. Like the way you're explaining. But who's who's communicating with you? See, that's the thing is. If you talk, Jill, go get closer to the mic. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Is she still battling it right now? Yes. Okay. So the, there would be a male figure that comes through with that information. That's So there's actually two males that come through with that information. Um, that aren't related to your grandmother. So, yeah. and I feel like this is father and grandfather or father. Step, there's like, they're showing me the number two. So definitely her grandpa, her dad, my grandpa. Um, and is it, I mean, I don't know for sure. I mean, I know there could I, be some younger ones too, but I, I, um, <laughs> I, 
Do you know how, where she's at with her diagnosis? She has incurable stage four lung cancer. Um, she has an extremely rare mutation. Um, she's been, she was put on um, like a, it was a just out of the trial kind of drug that was supposed to prolong her life for 12 months. And knock on wood, she's about at 40 months since that happening. She's had a third of her lung removed. Um, she has an um, a tumor that butts up oh. against her heart that they can't do anything with. So the reason that I asked that is because death is death is between you and God. I am not allowed to intermingle yeah. with when someone will pass. Um, but I will tell you that I felt that um, by the, his her father saying over and over again, I'll be here, I'm with her, I'll be here, I'm with her, tells me that okay. she... It's okay. Yeah. 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 So he also says to say happy birthday. So the number two, she was born in February. Perfect. Yeah. Aww. So that would be that's who, so sweet. Who Joe. he wanted to? Yeah. But um, I don't know who this birthday is for. But um, he, my mom is February. Uh, yeah. No. But that there's a birthday like that just happened or that will be happening. Oh. Um. um what? Did, where are we? We're May. Um. I mean, like there's there. I have a huge family. So. Okay, you'll figure it out when you get off what's, of here. What's the what's the number or whatever? Eighteenth. The eighteenth. Um, let me think about it. Yeah, you'll figure it out. Yeah, numbers are hard. That's I call it psychic amnesia when you're in the audience and you're in front of like 300 people and you get a microphone no in doubt. your mouth. Oh no, right. you're yeah. like, uh. yeah. Uh, that I happens on birth. anything in life. Yep. When you get a microphone. Absolutely. Yeah, in your and mouth. so it's like really it sucks for psychics because we're well, standing up there like, <laughs> yeah. And numbers are hard because they can be things oh. you're not that are not at the top of your mind. Mm -hmm. Like if you ask me right now when my grandma's birthday is, it's like I I know, but I would really have to think about it. Okay, so wait, wait. a minute. My mom's mom just turned ninety on the eighteenth of March. Perfect. Okay, so just just tell her happy birthday. I think that there was probably some cheating or um, an alcohol issue, something along those lines. With him? Yeah. Um, so it never seemed like that, but you know how when you're growing up, your grandpa always has a beer in his hand? Yeah. And I think that, yeah, there was probably some, like, mm -hmm. aftermath of that. Well, home. the reason that I say that is because he says, I'm sorry, with the happy birthday. Aww. So um, you might just tell her, happy birthday, also I'm sorry. <laughs> and it's kind of funny because I get the feeling that he's like, can you... Uh, go apologize to her so that when she does get over here, we can like hang out again. <laughs> hey, Joan, didn't you tell me that your mom was the one that was absolutely did not want you to do this today? <laughs> she um, is watching my kids. And up until midnight, we argued last night because she didn't want to watch them to con condone me coming here. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? It is. Maybe that's why the message is coming through so clear. Uh -huh. It's a message to your mom. Absolutely. And, and we will definitely... Um, bring you back oh, if yeah. you want to. Cool, yeah. And I mean, we could talk to you for an hour. Oh, we really could. Yes, many hours. Um, so interesting. We have people that are having to get other places right now that are working on the show. Um, but we didn't expect to go this long, which I'm was, sorry. No, no, no this, was, this was great. We could keep going on and on and on. This is wonderful. And with that, I mean, but with that being said, people can, if they're this is what's for them. If this is their cup of tea, if this is what they want, obviously you have a show tomorrow. It may be sold out and for people can still try to get tickets, but they can go to your website at uh, Brittany Buckwalter.com. Dot com. Dot com. I don't have, I don't have my tickets listed on there right now, but if you go to eventbrite.com yeah, and watch right. up my name uh, and follow me, you'll be alerted. You'll get emails um, anytime there's something coming up. Brittany, we appreciate the time with you today. Thank you um, for being willing to come in and see that just because it's not for me that we are respectful and we're respectful you of are. everybody and we try to learn. You're I've always felt that if you don't know about something or learn about it, then you can decide what you want to do, but yeah. show respect always. Yes, absolutely. I'm the same way. Yep. And uh, we appreciate you, Brittany. Have an, an awesome weekend. Thanks for coming in to the cancel this studio. Thank um, ladies and gentlemen, it's Brittany Buckwalter. Thank you. Wonderful. Except for I was just told my mom's going to pass soon. Oh. Turn that light off while I get it.